Hello everyone, this is Juan with another biology tutorial. This time I'm going to talk about the basic principles behind light microscopy, as you probably guessed after I'm showing you here on the screen, an image of a light microscope. Now these instruments played a major role when it comes to study really small life forms. So in the 1700s, we started coming up and developing these instruments that allow us to then discover the building blocks of every organism out there, these cells. As you know from basic biology, cells are about 1 to 100 micrometers in size. So it is impossible for us to actually find a way to study these organisms just relying on our naked eyes. So we had to find a way, and this was by inventing the microscope. There are a few principles, a few things that microscopes allows us to do, and for that reason, or this is what we're going to look at in this tutorial. Now the light microscopes can increase two things. The first one, first important characteristic of microscope is known as the resolution. And this is basically the ability that a microscope has to distinguish objects that are separated by really small distances. And to show you what this means, I have two, two objects here separated by this distance represented as a blue arrow. And then the two other objects, or you can say the same objects, but separated by a larger distance larger arrow as you can see here. Now imagine that I'm looking or using two different microscopes to look at these objects. What resolution allows me to do then is to distinguish these two objects from one another even though there is a small distance between them. So this is the amazing thing about microscopes. So one thing that I can tell you about these two, these two um, examples here is that if a microscope is able or allows me to detect or to distinguish two objects with a small distance or a smaller distance, then I can say that this microscope has a high resolution. Now a microscope that allows me, if I compare it to the previous one, that allows me to see two objects but only in larger distances so I can only distinguish them from one another only in larger distances then I say that it has a really low resolution so this is resolution in a nutshell the other characteristic that light microscopes allows us to do is that they can increase what is known as magnification and magnification is probably, you probably have heard about this word, and this is the way that you increase the size of an object or you enlarge it. So as I told you before, cells are about one to a hundred micrometers in size. And what microscopes then allows us to do is to increase or to visualize the, these cells, these small organisms, into a larger size. And usually light microscopes are able to do so or are able to increase size of a cell by around a thousand times more. So this really allows us to study them in the right detail. Let's start talking about resolution. And as I mentioned before, this is the ability of a microscope to distinguish objects separated by a small distances and as the word indicates, distance is definitely a numerical value. For that reason, there is a formula associated to resolution. And that is 0 0.61 times lambda over Na. Now, Na is what we call the numerical aperture, while lambda, if you remember well from physics, this is wavelength. Now let's look at numerical aperture quickly. And numerical aperture is the size of the cone of light that enters the microscope lens after passing through the specimen. And this is shown here as these red lines. 
Now I'm going to use this part here to explore the maximum numerical aperture and for that matter we're going to use a formula and the formula for a numerical aperture is going to be a refractive index represented by this Greek letter known as eta and a, the refractive index is a way that we use to measure how well light travels through a certain medium, say air versus water. Now this refractive index is going to be multiplied by sine of alpha. And keep in mind that alpha is the angle and this corresponds, or the alpha, sorry, corresponds to half of the width of the cone of light collected by the lens. So basically what you can see on the image on your left. Now knowing this, let's say that the refractive index for air is usually 1 or approximately 1. And for certain oils that are used in light microscopy that we're going to talk about, they're called immersion oils, and they're used in light microscopy to increase resolution. And these oils are approximately 1.4, so they have a higher refractive index, which allows then higher resolution. Now, in terms of the alpha, let's say that the maximum that it can achieve is 90 degrees. So this is the maximum half width of that cone that you see on the image on your left. Maximum achieved, and if you know well from math class in high school, sine of 90 equals then 1. Knowing all of these things, now we can just plug all these values into this formula and this is what we should get then. 1.4, the maximum that can be obtained using certain oils, times 1. This will equal therefore to 1.4. So the 1.4 is the highest possible value for the numerical aperture in, in light microscopy. In terms of wavelength, I have here an image showing you the range of, of different types of light. And for light microscopy, we're using, we're looking at uh, these specimens using visible light. For that matter, this is the range of wavelength that we need to look at. And we know from also our physics class that visible light uh, or the wavelength of visible light stands between 400 micrometers or nanometers here, sorry, or 0.4 micrometers all the way to 700 nanometers. And for that matter, we're going to establish a value of the wavelength as 0.5 micrometers for a light microscope. So let's say this is the light entering, the wavelength of the light entering a lens of a microscope, and this is what we're working with. Now we talked about the maximum numerical aperture. We also talked about the range of visible, of the wavelength of the visible light used in light microscopy. Now it's time for us to talk about the maximum resolution that you can get from using a light microscope. For that matter, we're going to use that formula that I talked about, the 0 0.61 times the wavelength over the numerical aperture. We also calculated that the maximum numerical aperture that you can usually get by using a light microscope would be 1.4 if you use an immersion oil to increase resolution. Now in terms of the wavelength of the light is usually about 1, sorry, 0 0.5 micrometers. Now if we put all these values into this formula, we will see that the maximum resolution will be then around 0 0.22 micrometers. Now what does this value mean? It actually is representing a distance 
and this is the theoretical limitation of resolution that you get from using a light microscope. And what does that mean? So if I'm looking under a microscope and there are two points that are distant from each other 0 0.22 micrometers, what this maximum resolution by using a light microscope tells me is that if these two points here that are being looked at under a microscope are less than 0 0.22 micrometers from one another, then they will look like as if they were one single object. But if they are at 22.22 micrometers or even higher distance between each other, then the resolution would allow me to see these two points as two distinguished objects under a light microscope. So this is what resolution, this maximum or this theoretical limitation of resolution that by using a light microscope is telling you. Now that we talked about resolution, it makes sense to move on to the second on the list, and this is total magnification. And this is another characteristic that is entirely allowed by light microscopes. And total magnification is a simple concept. So it's the total amount of times that you're able to enlarge a, a object that you want to look at. So, and there is, of course, a formula associated to this, because if you're looking under a microscope, you're going to have the magnification of the obje objective lens, and the objective lens is enlarging and projecting the image of the specimen into the direction of the ocular lenses. And for that matter, you're going to multiply that magnification of the objective by of course, the magnification that you get from the other lenses, so the ocular lenses. And the ocular lenses will then further magnify the intermediate image formed by the objective lens and then project into your eye. When we're looking at cells, for example, using a light microscope, between the I'm going to show you here with the mouse. So between this number five here, the, which is the objective lens, and the slide here, which is this number three here, there's usually air. So there's usually nothing here. Uh, and air is, of course, a medium, and it has a certain refractive index associated to it and of course a certain resolution. But if you want to look at a cell in more detail with better resolution so we can see two objects that are separated with very small distance between them, we have to use what we call an immersion oil. And the immersion oil here is represented by number four. And the immersion oil is basically a material of high refractive index, which then increases the, the numerical aperture. And if you input all these values into the formula, this means that it will increase the resolution. So you can see objects that are much closer together, which you couldn't see if you just have air floating around. So you're changing the medium between the objective lens and the slide or the specimen. Now for that matter, just for a quick comparison, if you look at refractive air, uh, index sorry, of air equals to one, and if you look at the refractive index of an oil is usually approximate to 1.4. An example of an immersion oil that is usually used in these cases, or commonly used, is the cedar wood oil.